Praise God. Last time we have concluded the teaching on the Word of God. Now in case you have not yet uh, seen those videos, I urge you to first go and watch those three videos. It's a three part uh, video, alright? It's about the Word of God. In that we have gone into the details of how we got the Bible, how we can be sure how we, that it is reliable and how to study the Bible, alright? So, uh, and not just study a passage of the Bible but also how you can uh, study any topic from the Bible, alright? So, from now on, what we are going to do is, you are going to hear me say things like, study this and reach your own conclusions, alright? Because now, you have the tools. I have given you the tools to study the Bible, to uh, study any topic, okay? So, uh, so you will be able to do your own research, alright? And uh, as I say, you don't need any spoon feeding, so to speak, okay? So, Today we'll be talking about the nature of God, or rather about the Trinity, alright? That is the triune nature of God, or the Trinity. Now the word Trinity is not found anywhere in the Bible, okay? But the concept is there, so we'll see what this all, all this is about. Uh, many different people and different uh, religions and different philosophies, all of these give different, uh, their own ideas about God, right? Some people say that there is no God. Some say that yes, there is a God, but he, does, he doesn't care about us. He doesn't care about his creation. Yet others say that, yes, there is a God and he's a loving God. Yet others say that, yes, there is a God, but he's distant and he's very stern. He's a stern judge. Okay. And uh, you must have heard some, other, some people say that, yes, I believe in God. I, I believe that there is some power. I don't know whether there is God or not, but there is some power, some energy behind everything. Okay. So in other words, these, these people think that God is a power or an impersonal force or an impersonal energy. Let's see what the Bible has to say about God. This was, all this was people's opinions about God. Let us see what God has spoken to us through the Bible. Alright, as we had seen earlier, God, the creator of this universe, speaks to us through His word, which is the Bible. Okay, and uh, through this book, we get a glimpse of what God is like. Right, what he's really like. First of all, is God a power or is he a person? Okay, is he an impersonal force or is he a personal being? To answer that question, let's first try to define what a person is. Okay, what is a person? Uh, and once we define what a person is, we'll contrast that with a power. Okay, so now I think we can all agree that you, while listening, uh, was watching this video, that you are a person. Yes. And that's of course, maybe it's 100 years in the future and there's some robot or advanced AI who's watching this. Alright, so I don't know. Okay, so let's see what is a person. So what's the first criterion for an entity to be a person? For any being or any entity to be a person, what is the first criterion? The first criterion is a person is self-aware. Alright, a person is self-aware. That is, you exist, not only do you exist, but you are aware that you exist. You know that you have an existence. Okay. So, that's the first criterion. Now, uh, many people talk about, even they doubt about even this also. All right. Am I a real person? Am I real? Is everything an illusion? All right. So, uh, to uh, these people, I would say just ask somebody to punch you and you'll find out whether you're real or not. Alright, so all that illusion and all that, I think that's, let's not go into all that. Okay, there's no need to go there. You exist and you are aware of your existence. So a person is, exists and a person is aware of his or her own existence. Second criterion for being a person is that a person has feelings. A person is capable of feelings and emotions. A person is capable of being happy or being sad or being angry. Alright. So, a person is capable of these uh, feelings. Now, even people who are with uh, some mental disorders, who don't have the depth of these feelings, even they, to some extent, have feelings. Alright, so, the second criterion for, uh, for an entity to be a person is that a person is capable of feelings. Third criterion is that a person can take decisions. A person is able to reason out, is able to think for himself. Okay. 
So a person is capable of thinking, of reasoning and of taking decisions. Okay. Uh, now many people, they are capable of taking decisions but they don't want to take decisions. That's a different matter. Okay. But you are capable of making decisions, so you are a person. So any entity who is capable of taking decisions is a person, let's say. Okay. Next, a person has morality. A person has some moral standard by which he or she tries to live. Alright. Now we may not always be able to live by that standard, but there is some, we have a sense of right and wrong. So a person has to have a sense of right and wrong. Okay, that is a sense of morality. So a person has a sense of morality, a sense of right and wrong. Finally, a person has a personality. Now what is a personality? Personality is the kind of person that somebody is, right? A person can be serious, somebody else can be jovial, somebody can be introverted, somebody else can be extroverted. Alright, so a person has some personality, a well-defined personality. Okay, of what kind of person that, uh, that person is? That, entity is all right so for a person or for an entity to be a person these are the five criteria that the entity has to fulfill all right now uh, for an entity to be a person or for a being to be a person do they need a physical body is a physical body essential of uh, the uh, essential part of a person now when we die what happens to us? Our body stays behind, our soul goes into the next level, alright, into the next plane or whatever you want to call it. So, do you stop being a person then? No, you're still a person, you're still a person at that time. So, an entity does not have to have a physical body, okay. I'm clarifying this now because this causes a lot of confusion because this, whether a pers uh, person needs a physical body or not, or this causes a lot, lot of confusion. So, let's clarify that right now. A person need not have a physical body to qualify as a person. Alright. Just these five criteria are enough. So, this is what a person is. What about a power or a force? Does a power or a force have all these things? Does it need to have these things? If you go into physics, well, we have definitions of power, we have definitions of force and energy and all that. Alright. None of them, none of the definitions have any of these in them. Okay, so a power need not be self-aware. A power need not have feelings. A power or rather does not have feelings, does, is not self-aware. A power or an energy cannot take decisions. Okay, now uh, those of you who are students of science will say, okay, sometimes light behaves as if it is taking decisions. Sometimes light behaves as if it has memory. Okay, but it is simply following some laws of nature that we have not, yet, not understood yet. Okay. Does energy or power has have any morality? No. Power is amoral. Okay. Energy is amoral. Does uh, does energy or power have any personality? No. Power does not have any personality. Okay. So power, by its very definition, is impersonal, unemotional, amoral. All right. So is God a person or is God a power? We've defined a person, we've seen what a power is. Now, is God, where does God fit into this? Does God fit into this criteria or does he fit into the criteria of power? All right. Uh, let's see what the Bible says. Is God self-aware? What did God say to Moses? I am who I am. I am that I am. That is, God is aware of his own existence. Right. So he is self-aware. Does God have feelings? Yes, he does have feelings. If you read the Bible, you can easily find God gets angry, he gets sad, he gets happy, he loves you. Alright, he is capable of feelings. Right. Does, can God take decisions? Definitely, God can take decisions. Yeah, he decided to create the universe. And when man fell, he decided to redeem man. Right. He took a decision rather than destroying humankind, we, I will redeem them. Alright. So God is capable of taking decisions. Next, does God have a morality? Does God follow some moral standard? Yes, he does. And that moral standard is what he has imprinted in, in each of us. So God has a definite moral standard. He has a def well-defined moral code. Alright. He has a definite sense of right and wrong. Uh, 
he he knows that and he, and he thinks that things like justice truth love generosity and mercy all these are good things things like hatred anger or injustice all these are wrong so god definitely has a sense of right and wrong does god have a personality definitely god has a well defined personality he is loving he is kind he is patient he is generous he is merciful he is humble so god has a definite well defined personality so god is not some impersonal power he is definitely a person so we believe in a personal god a god who is a person a god who is able to relate to you as a person all right uh so now the next time somebody tells you that god is just some power you can be sure that they are not talking about the one true god they are talking about some concept in their head all right okay now uh since we don't have much time we won't go into the definition of god okay uh what person uh, qualifies to be to be called to be called god you won't go into all that now okay you can research this on your own if you want to okay so according to the bible through which god has spoken are there many gods or is there, is there just one god are there many gods or just one god now many verses both in the old and new testament clearly say that there is only one god for example in first timothy chapter 2 verse 5 st paul says for there is one god in isaiah 44:6 the lord said the lord yahweh said i am the first and the last besides me there is no other god James 2:19 says you believe in you believe that there is one god you do well 1 Corinthians 8:6 St Paul says again yet for us there is one god Deuteronomy 6:4 says most famous line the shema here is Israel the lord your god the lord is one so definitely god is one all right however things are not that simple all right things are not that simple if you read the bible you find out that god has revealed himself in three persons all right three distinct persons each of those persons has a distinct personality uh now again because uh there are so many verses i i won't be able to quote all of them i'll quote just a very few to get you started okay and i'll also tell you where you can find more information uh let's go to Galatians 4 4 to 7 Galatians 4 4 to 7 Now there uh, St Paul says but when the fullness of time had come God sent forth his son born of a woman born under the law to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive adoption as sons because you are sons God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying out abba father so there is god there is the son of god whom god sent and there is the spirit of god who is in our hearts so there is god the father god the son god the holy spirit similarly in isaiah 59 verses 20 and 21 isaiah 59 verses 20 and 21 the prophet isaiah says the redeemer will come to zion to see those who turn from transgression into jacob says the lord so the lord is saying okay the lord that is the father is speaking and he is saying a redeemer will a redeemer will come he is not saying i will come the father is not saying that i will come he is saying the redeemer will come okay and in verse 21 he says as for me says the lord this is my covenant with them my spirit is upon you so there is the father there is the uh, the redeemer and there is the spirit Okay, and there are many, many more verses. Uh, last time I had alluded to Daniel chapter seven, where the prophet spoke about the Son of Man. Okay, and the Lord Jesus Christ referred to Himself as the Son of Man. The Son of Man is a divine being, all right, who sits at the right hand of the power of power. That is, who sits at the right hand of God. So, and in Judges five, we, uh, we and in other in Exodus and also in Genesis, we read about uh, a being who is called. or other person is called the angel of the lord okay the angel of yahweh and if you read about that god identifies himself with this angel of the lord okay the english bible uh, spells it as capital a okay so this is a distinct person from god the father 
but he is also he also is identified as God himself. Okay, and uh, the the Bible also speaks about the spirit of God. For example, in Isaiah 63, we see that the spirit of God can be grieved. All right. Similarly, Isaiah 52 verses 13 and 15 speak about the spirit of God. So there is God the Father, there is God the Son, there is God the Holy Spirit. Okay. Uh, there are many more verses in the Old as well as New Testament. If you want to know more, I recommend go to YouTube. All right, you're already in YouTube, hopefully. And there, uh, look up Dr. Michael Brown, Dr. Michael Brown Trinity. Okay. Another, go to a, a channel called Sira International, C I R A, Sira International. It's run by an, an Arab man named Al Fadi. Okay, Al Fadi and Anthony Rogers. They have a whole series on uh, the verses which speak about the Trinity. Okay, it's a long series. They go into lots of detail. They explain everything very clearly and distinctly. Okay, so this is what you can do if you want to study. Go to these two, Dr. Michael Brown and Sira International. C I R A Sira International. So, from all these verses, we see that the Father is a person. Is a, the Father is a distinct person with feelings, who is self-aware, who takes decisions, who has a morality, who has a personality. The Son, similarly, is a complete person. The Spirit is also a complete person. So there are three persons. But we also know that there is one God. So God, like a, uh, you must have seen a diagram like this, some of you have seen a diagram like this earlier. It says, the Father is God, the Son is God, the Spirit is God. Father, Son, and Spirit, all of them are God. But the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Father. The Father is not the Spirit, the Spirit is not the Father. The Spirit is not the Son, the Son is not the Spirit. Okay, all three are distinct, three distinct persons. But they are all God. So does this mean that there are three gods? No, we have already seen that there is only one God. How is this possible? One God, three persons. Now. One thing we need to understand is that God is an infinite being. He is way beyond our capacity to understand. Okay, he is infinite. We can't even imagine how great, how big he is. Okay, so uh, imagine this. Suppose there is a small ant that is walking around the sole of your shoe. Okay, all that the ant can see is the sole of your shoe. And the ant says, okay, I know this person. If, a, if an ant is walking around the sole of my shoe, Will the ant be able to say, okay, I, I know who Alok is. Alok looks like a black curved thing. Right? Will the ant be wrong? According to its perspective, it is right. But it is very far away from the truth. What the ant sees is very far away from the truth. In the same way, God is such a huge, such a great being that we have difficulty to understand what he is really like. With our mind, with our limited mind, we cannot fully understand what he is. In this life, we won't be able to understand it. So, should we stop trying to understand? The Lord Jesus said that eternal life is this, that you may know God and Christ who he has sent. Alright, and the Lord Jesus Christ came to give us eternal life. What is eternal life? That we should know him. That we should know God. So, God does want us to know him. God, that is why God communicates to us. So, he has communicated to us that he is three persons, one being three persons. Now, how is this possible? Because God is very different from human beings. Okay, now, as human beings, we are one person, one being. Okay, if you are one being, we are one person. Alok is one being, he is one person. You are one being, one person. But God is not like that. God is completely different. He is, a, uh, as somebody has said, he is a uh, species unique. All right. He's unique. There's no one else like him. So God is one being, three persons. Within one being, there are three dis distinct persons. Not just distinct personalities, but three complete distinct persons. They are not three manifestations of the same God. They are three different persons. All right. So this is what we call Trinity, the triune God. That is within the unity of God, there is Trinity. All right, there is. There are three persons in one being. Uh, 
I want to speak a little bit, bit more about the Son of God. Okay, the Son of God, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, why do I want to focus so much on this? Because of course He's our Redeemer. It is because of Him that we stand. It is because of Him that we are saved. It is because of Him that we can know God. Alright. And also because of that, there are so many wrong teachings about who Jesus Christ is. Like I said last time, there are, there are heresies right from the beginning of Christianity. There were heresies and wrong teachings about the person of Jesus Christ. Even today, there are so many wrong teachings about the person of Jesus Christ. So, who is Jesus Christ? He is the Son of God. Right. Now, did Jesus Christ start existing? Did he come into existence 2000 years ago? Or did he exist before that? Right. Uh, in John 1.1, 1, 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then he says, after a few verses, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Right. So, the Word of God, that is Jesus Christ. He existed right in the beginning. And uh, John says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. All things were made by Him. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. So, Everything that we see was made by the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything was made through Him, for Him. So the Lord Jesus Christ existed right from the beginning. And Jesus Himself said, Before Abraham was, I am. So we know that Jesus existed right from the beginning. Right from before the beginning of time, from eternity past. The Lord Jesus Christ existed. He did not come into being 2000 years ago. He existed right from eternity past. Alright. And uh, in Revelation, he says, the Lord Jesus says, I am the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega. Now, if you compare this with Isaiah, the Lord Jehovah said in Isaiah 44, 6, I am the first and the last. And in Revelation, the Lord Jesus says, I am the first and the last. So, uh, many people say that Jehovah is only the Father. No. Jehovah, Yahweh, Jehovah, however you want to pronounce the word, he is, he represents the entire Godhead, the Trinity. Alright, again, you can do your own study, you have the tools, alright, because Yehovah uh, refers not only to God the Father, but to the entire Godhead. Alright, some, in some verses, yes, it ref the Lord it refers only to the Father, but in many other, from other verses, we can see that Yehovah includes the entire Godhead. Alright, uh, okay, so... The Lord Jesus Christ existed right from eternity past, okay, and he became man, right? He became man. Now, when the God became man, that that is a that is something that we cannot really understand what happened, because God, like we said, God is an infinite being. He has, he's all powerful. He's all knowing, right? He know, he has knowledge of the smallest atom in the universe. He carries all that information in his mind. Alright, so God the Son, who had all this knowledge, who had all this power, He left all that and became man. In Galatians, the St. Paul says that uh, He poured Himself out, He poured Himself out. Alright, and so basically He left all that and became man. So that is what we call the mystery of the Incarnation. How could God become a human being? We just know that it happened. How it happened, we don't know. That's a mystery of the Incarnation. And uh, Jesus Christ did not have two personalities. Alright. Yes, he, will, he is the Son of God. He is God. He is also man. He is 100% God, 100% man. But that does not mean that he is. He has got two personalities. Right. Many people say that he is the Son of God and he is the Son of Man. We had alluded to this last time. Okay. Son of God is divine. Son of Man is human. No. As we saw from Daniel 7, Son of Man also points to his divinity, not to his humanity. Alright, but then again, he is a human being, definitely, he is also God. So, in, uh, in the person of Jesus Christ, the humanity and divinity are mixed together. Okay, God does, Jesus Christ does not have human part and a divine part, no. They are mixed together completely. I like how the Coptic Church puts it, they are that the divinity and humanity of God are mingled together in the person of Jesus Christ. They are mingled together. They are, they are inseparable. In Jesus Christ, you cannot separate these two. Okay. So, this is the person of Jesus Christ. Alright. He is an eternal being. He is God who existed right from the beginning. 
and in the person of Jesus Christ, the humanity and divinity are perfectly mixed together. They are inseparable. All right. So, uh, what is the implication of all this? Why does God have to be these three persons? What's the use? Right? I mean, what, what does it mean? What does it imply? Why couldn't it just, it's just be simple? Okay, there's one God, let's just be happy with it. Okay, but then why? What is the reason for all this? So, okay, let's just imagine. I can think of two reasons. Okay. Imagine God is not triune being. Imagine that God is just one person, one being, one person, like us, one being, one person. Okay. So, uh, will this God be capable of love? Now tell me, how many uh, how many persons does it take for love to be perfected? Are just two people enough? Let's imagine there is a planet. On the entire planet, there are only two people. Okay, and they say that they love each other. Okay, there are two persons on that planet. They say they love each other, but at every opportunity, they try to hurt each other. They try to they try they treat each, other, treat each other like crap. Is that love? It's not love. But they say that they love each other because there is no nobody to witness what is happening. Okay, so for love to be perfected. It takes three persons. Okay, uh, for example, even in a Christian marriage, we say a Christian marriage is not a contract between a man and a woman. It is a covenant between a man and a woman that they make with God. All right. So, in a Christian marriage, a man and a woman they make a covenant with each other and they make a covenant with God. So they are uh, not all, not only are they accountable to each other, but they are also accountable to God. All right. So it takes three persons. For love to be perfected. So, uh, just imagine if uh, God was only one person. Okay, when He created this universe, perhaps He would have been able to have compassion on it. Perhaps He would have been able to be benevolent. All right, but would He have been able to love? No, because He never, He would have never known what love is. Right. But our God, because he, in eternity past, He existed at three persons and He knew what love is. These three persons, the Father, Son and the Spirit, they lived together as three persons. They lived in perfect love and harmony. Alright, so that is why when they created the universe, when God created the universe, when God created human beings, He knew what love is. He could love us. That is why He loves us with a passion. He doesn't just have, he doesn't just have compassion on us. He doesn't just have, uh, feel benevolent towards us. He doesn't just feel generous towards us, he loves us with a passion. That is why when Adam and Eve sinned, he didn't just let them die. He said, okay, fine, this experiment failed, I'll start a new. He didn't do that. He said, no, I love these people. And so he loves us with a passion. That is why he left all his power and he became a human being. Okay, we can't even imagine what happens, what, what that transaction was like. Just imagine you becoming a worm. Right? It was that, that transformation, the transformation of God to become man was even greater than that. Right? Why did he do that? Because he loves us with a passion. Why? Because he knows what love is. Because God existed as three persons from eternity past. Second thing. Uh, now, let's again imagine that God, is, God was only one person. What kind of universe would he have created? What kind of people would he have created? Okay, if God was only one person, he had a distinct personality, right? And what kind of person, what kind of people would he have created? What kind of world would he have created? It would have, we can imagine because everything that he creates would have his, his imprint, right? So, in such a world, all people would look the same way, right? They would behave the same way, they would, they would be required to dress the same way, all right? And there would not be any diversity. Okay. But because our God is a triune being, within this unity there is diversity. We see that there, that there is a diversity in creation as well. We see distinct animals, distinct plants. Even among human beings, there are distinct cultures. There are distinct ways of thinking. Alright. Because each of, us create, uh, each of us carries that imprint of God. Each of us has been created in the image of God. Alright. So that diversity we can see 
in the creation as well because God himself is uh, within God himself there is diversity within unity alright so what does this mean for us that we should respect that diversity don't try to hammer everybody to your own point of view now again uh, there is limit to diversity also because there is within the unity of God there is diversity so that does not mean that everything goes or anything goes no within with the, 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 the diversity has to be within some limits as God has taught us in his word some things are permissible some things are not permissible but diversity is something that God celebrates all right because he himself is a diverse God all right so this was the triune being or the trinity of God so uh, like I said I didn't go into too many details too many verses because now you have the tools to do your own study I've given you the hints where you can go get more information all right so God bless you and next week we'll go to the next topic God bless you